joining me now is uh, our military analyst, Sean Bell. Sean, great to see you as always. T talk us through what we know uh, about what happened overnight in Lviv in particular. Yeah, Ukraine claims to have been a massive wave, again, of uh, missile and mainly drone attacks across, particularly in the early hours of the morning, across uh, Ukraine. Lviv seems to be in the main target, uh, which crossed the west. As you say, one person has died there. Um, there was a major fire industrial warehouse there, which um, is, uh, has it, it caused a huge amount of damage. They also found that um, a man and woman were trapped underneath the rubble. The images we're seeing here are from that. And amazingly, the woman kept emerged completely um, unscathed. Um, it's really the question is why have the Russians attacked Lviv? It is a long way away from anywhere. It looks very likely this is about Russian attacking Western supplies of aid into, into the country. Um, but there's also a person killed at Helsinki as well, and that's where we got to the two, two dead last night. Um, also, there are a slightly more positive news in Ukraine. Um, we've heard that the first grain ship has left um, Ukrainian ports. It's only carrying uh, 3,000 tonnes of grain, but it's using that little... A corridor down the territorial waters bound for the Bosphorus Strait. So we're hoping that's uh, at least a, a moment of relief in the grain story. M meanwhile, President Zelensky is in New York for the UN General Assembly. Talk, talk us through the relevance. Yeah, it, it's um, there in person uh, this time. He normally joins via um, some sort of Zoom link. So the United Nations uh, General Assembly in New York. Um, earlier, he visited a load of the wounded. We're seeing some of the footage there from now. The, the uh, United States is providing some help with some of the more difficult injuries uh, at the New York Stratton Island University Hospital. Um, but also he's been doing some media interviews whilst he's there with CBS earlier. He spent about an hour talking about the war and how the Ukrainians were fighting to stop World War III happening in Europe. But he also described um, President Putin as the sort of second Hitler. Um, now, as I said, he would normally do these remotely. He's actually there in person. Uh, later today, he'll be addressing the whole of the United Nations uh, General Assembly, apart from, obviously, President Putin, because mm -hmm. he's in by the International Criminal Court, but uh, Lavrov's there. And then tomorrow he'll be at the United Nations uh, Security Council doing a briefing there. And, and just quickly, Sean, I mean, why is he there in person? I mean, he's timed it when others like uh, Macron and Sunak haven't gone in person. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the United Nations, as you well know, is 193 countries. It's a huge... And therefore, it's relatively impotent. The permanent members are Russia. Therefore, no statement's going to come out of the UN that's... Um, but, I say, that's why the G7, which is quite a lot more important, met in private, uh, and they've issued a very strongly worded statement. But President Zelensky takes every opportunity to... He wants to talk to global leaders. He wants to get more weapons. It's very rare for global leaders to all get together... The fact is, he's asked for the Russia. Why is Russia not being removed from the um, mm -hmm. from the um, United Nations? That's not going to happen anytime soon. And the advocates would say you need to have some method of all these countries. They're not all aligned, but when the war is over, there'll need to be discussions, and that's why they're probably still there.